Hi, and welcome to the Pool Guy Podcast Show. In this episode, I'm going to be talking with Dave Sargent and Matt Lopez, the owners of Riptide Pool Vacuum System. We're going to cover everything about the Riptide Vacuum System that you need to know to make an informed purchasing decision. Leslie's Pool Supplies is a proud partner of the Pool Guy Podcast Show. Leslie's Pool Supplies has been do-it-yourselfers and pool trade professionals' trusted partners since 1963, providing quality products and services to make pool care easy and solutions and expertise to do it right. So I'm joined today by Dave Sargent, who's the president of Riptide, and Matt Lopez, who's the vice president of Riptide Pool Vacuum Systems. How are you doing today, guys? Doing great. Thank you for having us on, Dave. Can you just tell the listeners about the Riptide Vacuum System? Absolutely. So the the intention of the Riptide is really, I mean, the, this class of cleaner already existed. Our angle coming into the market was build quality, basically. Just make the darn thing as durable and dependable as it could possibly be. And really, that's been that's, that's been our motto since the beginning. Granted, it does, I would say, uh, function better than anything else that's ever been on the market before us. It does its job better, but in the end, the build quality is so important, and that's what was missing in the industry for these this class of cleaner. And really, I guess, you know, a lot of people tell us it's missing in the industry, period. A lot of products out there are made out of these cheap, light plastics, and they're just not holding up. They uh, you One drop, and you could, you could destroy the whole product. Whereas uh, what we've done is create a unit that is holding up incredibly well. We've got units on the road for right around almost four years now. And it's unbelievable how little repairs we're doing to them. And the, and the things that we have repaired, a lot of them, we... Because we deal direct, we have the luxury of seeing these failures ourselves. So we are able to identify a problem and work on a real permanent solution very, very quickly. Whereas if we were dealing with distribution, we might never get the real feedback from the from the buying public, from our own customers. We would never have that clean, direct contact where we were able to decipher what really needed to happen to make improvements. But now we're intimately plugged into every single customer and it makes it real simple for us to move on and facilitate re- uh, uh, improvements very, very quickly. And it's kind of cool because you can go online and read people's responses to what we have done, and they're talking about that. When you go about it, you don't know if people are going to really understand what we do uh, in an attempt to do the best possible machine on the market. But people are getting it, and they are appreciating it, and it's really, it's really nice to see. Yeah, by the way, this is Dave talking here. And then Matt, I think I recorded a podcast about two years ago with you. And since yeah, then, it was about two years, two years ago. And Dave wasn't on that one. So I know Dave's excited to talk today. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and so the Riptide is an evolving cleaner. You guys do a lot of improvements over the years. So in the past two years, can you go over some of the improvements that have come out since the last recording? Oh, gosh, Matt, you want yeah. to take that one? Oh, I don't know a if lot. I can think. There's a lot. Yeah, I don't know if I can think of everything off the top of my head, so I'm just going to kind of work back from the newest stuff that we're doing and and go from there. So the newest uh, upgrades that we're doing now is high-torque motors. Uh, so we're using rare earth magnets inside of the motors. Uh, that's something that nobody else is doing, and that provides a lot more suction power, a lot more torque. Uh, so when you get into these, you know, storm cleanups or, you know, heavy debris cleanups, the, the new motor just rips through that, that debris. It really does make a big difference. You can actually feel it when you turn the, the impeller by hand. You'll feel the magnets, the bumps in the magnets from the magnets grabbing uh, the armature inside of the motor. And uh, to complement that further, we actually now include a shortened impeller. Because oh, yeah. when, when these, when these uh, vacuums are vacuuming, of course, they're sucking up everything is sucking up anything from super big bunches of leaves and which comes through in big clumps very often and rocks and mulch and broken glass because tables get flipped into the pool so there was always an issue where debris would get stuck between the tip of the impeller and the vacuum case and that will stop any vacuum any amount of torque or power or anything else so the incredibly simple solution was we just shortened the impellers up and <clears throat> And with that short impeller, 
the the extra torque is great for leaves, but even things like rock rocks where the extra torque would not be enough. Obviously, it's not going to break a rock. So uh, with things like rocks, it just gives the clearance to to not plug up. But not only rocks, we get into acorn season in different parts of the country. Uh, all these different kinds of seed pods and things that that tend to fall into the pools. Um, we actually did a test where we took like 10 or 15 pounds of rocks and broken glass, threw it into a pool, put that short impeller on there, and we vacuumed out every single bit of it within, I'm going to guess, 15, 20 seconds. But then we went ahead and we put the normal length impeller back on there. I don't think we picked up five pieces before it just wedged in there and stopped the stopped the motor. And that's what I was talking about, that how Riptide is always evolving and improving their system. So with two impellers, I mean, that's you guys are on top of the game there. And then the switch has been updated. I feel like I'm like a mad scientist when I plug this thing in now. Yeah, that was, up, that was updated a couple of years ago. So we yeah. saw, we, you know, we based on feedback and part failure, uh, we noticed a problem with the switch. So we went to the switch manufacturer and told them how to fix their own switch they were making. And they made and those changes. And since they've made those changes that we requested, the switch is bulletproof, basically. I mean, it's mm-hmm. we've never real. seen one fail since yeah. we got the uh, the updates done. And that's yeah. interesting. That's an interesting philo- philosophical difference between us, I think, and others is first of all, the only I think the only part that we really just purchase is the motors. But even the motors we've redesigned to our own specs now. And then we were purchasing the switches and we were just buying them originally. But now when we find a failure like the switches, what we do is we don't want to just abandon ship and go to a new vendor because we don't know what we're going to get. So we and in, in this case, we did destructive testing where we would just go ahead and, and if we ever saw a failure, we'd get it back, we'd cut it open because it's a sealed unit. And we would find out what the flaw was that would cause it because it's a, such a simple, robust switch. There's no reason it should fail. It's certainly not without a good long life to it first. So in this case, it was a simple little plastic piece that would shear off from inside and it would get across the contacts and stop it. But that tiny failure is a big problem for our customers out in the field, right? We mm. can't let these simple little things cause failure. So rather than just jumping ship and going to a new vendor and getting all upset because it wastes money for us, because we end up changing all the switches out if we see a problem. So uh, we waste thousands of dollars with every tiny little problem. So we try to have the approach of talk it out with the vendor, give them the solutions, providing they're willing to stand up, get it fixed, and uh, do whatever the necessary changes are. And providing they do that, we will go ahead and stick with that vendor. And just that way, we know going forward, we don't just go down that slippery slope and end up with another problem in the future. Mm-hmm. And that has that has been very powerful for us. We have done it with motors. We've done it with with uh, the switches. And right now, we're working on cords. Cords have been really one of the toughest things for us to do. And we've now worked out a really cool new design that we're excited about. Mm, you know, great, to, touch, to, to touch back on that switch thing, you know, we did have failures with the original run of switches, as you know, an original run of plugs. But we stood up and, and warrantied those at, at no cost for all of our customers. In fact, uh, we very rarely see see them. I think we've got the majority, if not all of them, replaced on the road. But a, a guy called a month ago, and it was a two-year-old purchase. But we still warrantied that for free form and got him the new upgraded components because we knew we had a problem with that part. Yeah. We're never going to let our customers out there and and eat our mistakes and eat our problems. If it's something that was a legitimate problem, we, we always stand behind the product. Yeah, yeah, I think you... that's what separates you guys from the pack. And I hear this from just about every guy in the field that that works with you that's purchased a vacuum is that your customer service is above and beyond anyone else they've ever dealt with. It means a lot to us because, yeah, you know, word, very, word of mouth, you know, means a lot. But it, doesn't, it wouldn't sit well with, with Dave or myself if we just sat back and sold people a product and didn't support that product and didn't have parts available for it, didn't take our problem seriously and design fixes for them. You know, we're not out just to make a quick dollar or something like that. We, we really believe in the product. We like what we do. We love what we do and we don't want to do anything else. So it's important to us to always take care of our customers because we realize how important they are. I mean, we'd, we'd be nowhere without, without them. Mm-hmm. Are you going to chime in, Dave? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> but okay. you said everything that needs to be said. 
So one of the things about the vacuum system and it, the, the main component of this besides the motor is the bags themselves. And you want to touch on the bags that you guys carry. There's all different microns. People may not know what a micron is to begin with. Um, bags but- are, yeah, that's, the bags are a great topic, really. So so we designed our bags totally unique in the industry. We gave them a, a molded polyurethane, but kind of a rubber rubberish component for a for a ring that the bag is actually sewn to that actually facilitates incredibly easy attachment and removal of the bag and it also completely 100 percent eliminates blow off which was always a big problem in the industry mm-hmm. that let the bags blowing off and it happens at the worst time when they're the fullest because there's a lot of pressure in the bag at that point and then it blows it off our bags stay on so well there's even if the, even if you put a plastic bag on it, it would not be able to blow off. So that will never be an issue. What has been an issue for us, though, is trying to educate people on how to put the bags on and off. And we're now doing videos and stuff like that. It's really incredibly simple. That's when we sell Riptide now, they automatically get emailed a professionally done video and put the bag on and off. Uh, and providing they do it just like that, it's really simple. But that's actually been one of our, our tougher things lately is just trying to be sure that we communicate well with the customers to make them realize that if it's not incredibly simple, that they're just not getting the procedure right. So just yeah, and if anybody out yeah, if anybody out there is that's listening does have an issue putting the bag on, it's very easy. We can teach you very well, just easily. Just drop us an email. We'll get that video over to you, and you'll be putting it on like nothing in in no time. It's all mm-hmm. technique. A lot of people think it's a lot to do with strength or. Or they something like that, but, so, so but, yeah, each time no, we know that we're going to yeah. have a hard time getting through to somebody, they'll they'll start by telling us how strong they are, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> which is funny. Yeah, so that's so, uh, and when we hear that, we're like, oh god, this is going to be hard to explain. That so so to go through the different bags that we do offer, we do sixty microns, seventy five microns, one hundred microns, uh, two hundred microns, four hundred microns. We do a bag that's called a heavy net bag, which is big, three eighths holes in the bag for heavy debris pickup and we do a fountain bag which is a shorter bag for for uh, fountains and spas and stuff like that Uh, so the smaller the micron size the finer debris will pick up Uh, so that's why we do a lot of different bags because as you know uh, Dave there's a lot of different situations every pool is different and the debris you have in one pool you might not see in other pools on your route so you might get to one pool and it has a ton of leaves and sticks because there's trees over the pool so you wouldn't want to use one of the finer bags which is a more delicate cloth uh, to vacuum that stuff up but one thing that we've done you know to touch back on recent changes is the bags now are being double layered so on the outside of the bag we're putting a stronger more durable, more coarse bag on the outside, and then the finer cloth is on the inside. Mm-hmm. And that's all done to, to make the bag last longer so you get a real good lifespan out of the bag. And uh, a lot of guys like me have already been double bagging for years when, with the older vacuum system. So that's like a, that's a, an improvement that definitely has been proven to work. And I would say the consensus for your bags, for me and for some of the guys I talked to, is that the 75 micron bag is like the sweet spot as far as picking yes. up fine dirt and also leaves without having the problem of tearing yeah yes i think you're right but then there's others that we actually have some big customers that have lots of riptides and they buy nothing but 60 micron Mm. we're in the process of doing a 25 micron in an attempt to eliminate system backs at all you know when they get that you get that dust that gets left behind consistently so you're going to have to system back it out or Mm -hmm. vacuum it to waste or something this would allow you to get about as, as fine as a system or a cartridge filter, but with a bag. So as long as you just get a little bit of, you just have a little bit of dust in the pool, you throw that 25 on there and try to get it cleaned out without having to waste the time to system back. Oh, that'd be interesting to, to test that one out because that's that's a seriously small micron. Yeah, it, we've got we've got people that have been testing them for us and they seem to be working really well if you have indoor pools or if you have screened in pools uh, or if you have some of that fine dust like Dave was talking Mm -hmm. about. I was actually incredibly close minded to it. Unfortunately, I shouldn't have been. I should have been more open minded when people were. It was actually we did a trade show in Spain and people in France kept asking for it for indoor pools. I was like, no, we're not doing it. There's no way it's not going to work. And um, ended up getting talked into trying it. And it's the only bag I use in my house now. I love it. 
it is definitely a specialty bag and it is something that uh, will not be for every pool uh, but it will i think have its place and uh, we should have those uh where if, you, if you're listening to this now, it's it's going to be sometime in August when you're listening to this. We'll have those sometime around the end of September. Okay, perfect. So let's talk about um, the vacuum systems themselves. Like a lot of guys are hesitant because the price point is one of the things that are, it's discouraging in some cases um, or a hurdle. And mm-hmm. let's talk about the vacuum systems themselves and how they could maximize your pool route, save you money and time. Yeah, I think I think the most that's an incredibly important topic. You're absolutely right, Dave. So and, and you know it's funny is because I make these things now and I know what goes into them, the price point doesn't feel like anything to me anymore. It just feels like what it needs to be. But when you're buying these things, I can remember buying uh uh other other products in the past for the for this and it's, it's, do I really want to spend this money on this? Do, is, is it worth it? Is it whatever? But it really, even then, it was actually, you had to do it. You could not afford to do the business without the machine. And that's really what all tools are supposed to be about, right? It doesn't matter if yeah. what, you're, what field you're in, your tools are supposed to pay for themselves. Your tools are supposed to validate themselves by making you more productive. Maybe even make it so that you can do something that you just po- couldn't possibly have done. In the case of this, it just makes you far, far more productive. And what happens once you start using one of these machines is you can't possibly, you become so much more productive, you can't possibly get through your day without it anymore. That's when people panic if it breaks down. So that's something that uh, that they, that, you know, it, it's funny because you become so much more productive, but you don't really realize you're working so hard until you don't have it one day. And then you panic because there's no way you can possibly get through your entire route without having this thing. And, you know, I almost talked about vacuum systems as saving you money because you can do more work and get more accounts. Um, and if you have employees, it makes their life a lot easier. So there's a lot of aspects. Well, if, and, of, and when it comes to employees, well, you have to be able to pay them a wage that they can actually survive, right? Mm-hmm. So with an employee, they can't. You can't afford to hire an employee that doesn't use a machine like this because you have to squeeze productivity out of them without killing them. That becomes super important. And we actually have been switching out a lot of fleets of these things lately, where we're doing, uh, you know, ten, fifteen uh, machines, and these people would never consider operating without a machine of this type it just wouldn't be possible because that each employee again would not be able to generate enough income for the company Mm -hmm. to justify paying them a decent living wage and having a profit left over to warrant even hiring them yeah and there's other aspects too like in your service agreement you tell the customers you're going to vacuum every time you get there well this is a much easier way to vacuum a pool than getting out your hose your vacuum. by the time you set up your vacuum head and hook it up to the system, you're pretty much done using it with the Riptide. So it yep. actually covers a lot of different needs there. And also, um, one of the things that I hear from people that do get a Riptide is they wish they would have got one sooner. Oh, yeah. Oh, we yeah. hear it all the time. We have people, that, which amazes me, but people that have been in the industry for like 30 years, and they've never used a machine like this. And when they get one, they just can't believe that they ever. They wonder, were. yeah, they wonder a lot how they were doing it for the past 30 years <laughs> without one. It, they'll call. It's actually surprising because I've, I've been doing, you know, these types of businesses for my entire adult life where we sell products to customers in different fields and they're all tools. And I've never had, you know, in the tool industry, I've never had. I've never experienced where customers will call, you know, a week or two after using the product and actually thank you, like how much time they're saving and how much they'll call for no other reason just to, to just to, you know, say thank just you. The and thing always, for the time. Yeah, that that's always blows cool. my mind. Yeah, it always blows my mind because you we really are, you know, making these people be able to run their business and be more successful because they're able to, you know, use that time now that they have either to do repairs or pick up more pools uh, or just spend more time with their family. Uh, you know, you know, it, it, but they're still doing the same amount of pools just in less time. You know, one of the things that I find that's amazing about it is that um, you never, like if you never had used one before and then you actually use one in the pool, especially when there's a storm, a windstorm, the pool looks so much nicer after using the vacuum system in a heavy debris pool than just skimming it out. And so you're actually gaining more customer uh, quality of service by using a vacuum system in situations where it's really windy or there's a heavy debris pool. 
Absolutely. So it pays for itself because you can make the customers happier. Even, you know, and that's actually an interesting topic, Dave. So we've had a lot of people that get our machine after using the competition for years. And because they can effortlessly use our finer micron bags, they, they do that, but they're getting all the sand out. They're getting all much finer particles out. And they've actually called us and told us that the customers are commenting on how much cleaner their pool is, which blow, blew, that blew my mind. I did not mm. ever expect to get a phone call like that because I didn't think it was going to be that much difference. I thought it would do the same thing and just be a, a better bill quality. But that's, that's and, and interestingly enough, I actually went out on a sales call one day with a large customer and has a lot of machines. They had already vacuumed the pool before I even got there. But for the sake of them just pushing it around in the pool, they they went ahead and took it and threw it in the pool. And they wanted to see what it felt like and everything else. Well, we were pulling out so much sand, and it did, they didn't know because they were they were vacuuming up sand that was going through the bags that they were using on the, their, the machines they were using. And it was just dispersing across the pool so evenly that it just left this danky-looking brown surface. But you didn't notice it really. It just It just looked like that was the surface. But you could see a track where where the riptide went. Every single place where we were driving it, we ended up having to vacuum every inch of that pool again so that we weren't leaving these tracks. Yeah, and so since you created this company from the ground up and you've been doing this now for about four years, what do you think are the key things that sets you apart from your competition? Uh, let me let me start by answering that. I think the biggest thing that separates us from our competition is is this. You're dealing direct with us. Whether you have a question before you buy or after you buy, you're always talking directly to us. You're not having to jump through hoops for anything. We care at the end of the day, and we've got our customers' backs at the end of the day. Uh, and I'll let Dave elaborate on what he was going to yeah, say. Yeah, and, and, and to take it even further, so because the customers are dealing directly with us, we like we said earlier in the podcast here, we we have immediate knowledge of anything that's not sitting quite right anything that can be in i mean don't get me wrong everybody has an opinion on everything we can only do certain things but if somebody can bring something to the table where we can really wrap our heads around it and in and implement a new design or not even a new design a little tweak that just makes things a little bit better you know if we had a problem for a while where we were dragging cords on the ground because we didn't have a good place to put the the clip we want people to unplug the cord all the time so they're not twisting the cord and damaging it a big part of the reason for developing a really high quality plug in the first place. Uh, so we want people to unplug it and leave it unplugged until they are ready to go vacuum again. So we, so we, we have been telling people that, but we didn't really give them a good way to manage that cord. So we recently developed a cord clip goes on the handlebar and gives them a place to snap that cord on the cart when they're, when they're transporting. But prior to that, inevitably lots of people were dragging the cord in because they just weren't securing it very well. So little tiny things sometimes make a big difference because once you do something like that, you drag the, the, the plug on the ground. Now you can't vacuum right, right away. So uh, little things make a big difference. Yeah, I think that's true. And I think the fact that you are so involved in the company translates into that amazing customer service that I hear about all the time from the people that deal with you. Um, and so let's, let's say someone's in Texas right now and there's a big storm coming their way and they want to order a riptide. Go through the process of if they order it tomorrow or today after the podcast, when are they going to have the riptide on their front door? They well, would it would ship out. So it's too late to get it out today because it's almost six o'clock Eastern here. Mm -hmm. uh, but we have had cases where people call us at five, five thirty. We happen to be in the office uh, and we also happen to be across the street from the UPS distribution center for our county. Uh, so we just walk it right across the street. Mm -hmm. Um, which is cool and a pretty unique thing. Uh, so we've had yeah, cases which, where people have ordered at 5.30, 6 o'clock at night, and they're in Florida, and they have it the next day. Uh, 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 but for somebody in Texas, if they were to order today, they could buy on, online at any time, RiptideVac.com. Uh, they would order it. We would get it shipped out tomorrow. We always keep not just all of our vacuum systems in stock, but every component possible for the vacuum in stock at all times. Uh, and it would ship out on UPS, uh, and it would take to Texas, you know, three business days, four business days to get out there. And yeah. that's actually something we're learning right now is we're, we're hearing from our company, not from our competition, but from our customers and actually picking up a lot of customers because 
for some reason they just can't get parts they can't get they can't get the units they can't get anything out of our competition so but we've heard all kinds of philosophies and reasons for this and and these were steadfast customers that had been using these products for a long time and i don't know why they're they're stumbling like that but it's super important that you ship immediately when a customer orders something mm -hmm in this industry because these aren't toys they have to have these things up and running and then let's say someone wants one but they don't have the cash available for whatever reason in their business to get one then go to your website and you guys do offer financing we do offer financing uh it's through a company called a firm uh, it's very easy to apply for uh you would just go on the website add the vacuum to the shopping cart, and then you actually go through the checkout process. Uh, and then when you get to the screen that asks for a credit card number, you'll see that there's an option down below there that says affirm, buy now, pay later. Uh, you would select that, and they ask, they only ask a couple of questions. It's actually pretty, pretty interesting technology, how they pretty much already know who you are, but <laughs> by your, by your phone. It's pretty scary, yeah. actually. Yeah, it's pretty scary. They, 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 only, ask, they only ask for, an, if, in fact, I... I bought a mattress with it because it was the same company that was on a mattress website and I wanted to go through the processes to see what it was really like because I've never actually done it. Uh, and all they ask for is your date of birth and the last four digits of your social security number. Huh. So that's all they need to know about you apparently. Uh, and they'll tell you instantly whether you're approved or not. Uh, if you, we, there is 0% financing available if you do qualify. Uh, not everybody does qualify. We really don't have any control or say in the credit mm -hmm. approval process. Uh, yeah, people so, will sometimes call us and, and explain to us they thought they should have got qualified, but honestly, we have no yeah, say in it. No say in any part of it. Yeah, uh, and so the, the average person that has pretty good credit, if they're listening and they have a need for the Riptide, there's really nothing stopping them from going to your site and getting one. No, Matt, is there still 0% on there or is that Yeah, fast? no, there's still there's still 0%. Yeah, so I, I don't think there's any reason why you shouldn't get one. I mean, it's we've talked about all the great benefits in this podcast, and if someone's on the fence thinking about should they get one or not, um, the fact that you can just go to your website and order it with zero percent financing, I mean, that's that's the deal closer right there. Yeah, yeah, and the other you thing know, is, like we talked earlier, is these things should pay for themselves. This is not really, this isn't something like it's like it's a mm -hmm. consumption item where you like oh, it's a it's a a boat or a motorcycle or, or a toy. This thing will allow you to buy the boat or the motorcycle or the toy because it's all about productivity. It's all mm -hmm. about squeezing more productivity out of every employee before you hire more yeah exactly and i'm not the biggest fan of financing uh, you know I, i'm more about you know debt free and and but you know in this situation if it's something that's actually going to generate more productivity i think i think it's a great option for for a lot of people. yeah and i'm i'm also not a big fan of financing but i, I know it's available so and i know people yeah. do, do want to use that tool um, but I'm also with you, Matt. I'm I'm a debt free kind of person too. But it's available, and no one really, no one else offers that for their systems. And so, yeah. Well, I would like to be a debt free kind of person. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just not. <laughs> um, and then I guess the the last thing that we can touch on here is, let's go ahead and we mentioned your website a few times. But let's say someone's listening and they want to get the Riptide now, so they go to your site and they just put it, pretty much put it in the cart with everything else they would want to purchase. Yeah, yep, they can go to our website, riptidevac.com. Uh, they could buy right on there. If, if they prefer to talk to us, if they could talk to, to Dave or myself. They can call us at 800. Uh, ooh, I don't even know a phone number. A phone number off the top of my head. I've drawn a blank. It's here. on your website. 800 735 3029. That's it. That's it. Yeah, 800 735 3029. They can call us, speak to, to Dave or myself. Uh, they can send us an email to uh, sales at riptidevac.com. Um, so we're, we're pretty easy to, to get a hold of. They can send us a message on Instagram or Facebook. You know, uh, you know some, one, one, one other thing that we're working on right now, Dave, that's really cool, and we're kind of excited about this, and we're hoping to implement it soon. So these, these machines, are, I mean, the, the design of them is, is such that any repair that could have to could, that that could need to be done with these can be done in like ten minutes. You can put a new cord on them in ten minutes, a new motor in in ten minutes. 
Uh, and we did design the, the control panel so that whole component can come off and be replaced in one piece in about 10 minutes. It literally bolts onto the cart with two bolts, and then it just hooks up to the battery. And everything that runs the Riptide is brand new that way. Um, so we're in the process of putting a diagnostic kit together. So when we sell a Riptide, they get one of these kits. It'll be plastic printed cards so it can get wet or... or but within just a couple of tests, it'll tell them if the motor's bad, the cord's bad, or the control panel's bad. Mm. And then they can literally do any repair they need to themselves with effortless and without panicking about. Because a lot of people look at something like this, and it took us this long to wrap our heads around the need for this. But they look at something like this, and it's kind of complicated to them. But in reality, if you slow down and break it down, you realize that there's just a cord, a motor, or a control panel. Mm -hmm. And now you just need to be able to diagnose that and figure what that out what, what is actually giving you trouble. And granted, it's a mechanical thing. Eventually, every Riptide, if it's getting used regularly like we want them to be and like they should be, uh, is going to break down. It has to. But we want people to be able to get through the... Uh, diagnostic process effortlessly and de decide what they need and buy the component they need online in their leisure time as opposed to being stressed out in the middle of the day. Yeah, I and mean, I guess I should say, um, and that's a great aspect of it, I, I would, I think a lot of the guys would love to have that card and and to be able to fix it really quick. And I, the last thing I guess I should add is that the battery is actually sold separate. I don't think we mentioned that at all during the whole podcast. Yeah, yeah so the battery and the charger are sold separate, but it's a very common battery um for the the sl model which is the cart unit we recommend a, a 27 series deep cycle they sell that pretty much everywhere walmart uh costco AutoZone. yeah all the all the clubs all the, and all the, all the like, yeah and all the auto parts stores typically amazon also sells the batteries too. yes that that as well most people uh, just walk right I, in to, I, to walmart though I, it's very I popular. typically rec recommend Walmart. For, the number one reason I, I recommend Walmart for picking a battery is one, we've had good luck with them and they're, and mm -hmm. they're cheap, but two, everybody's close to a Walmart and it's very easy to get, you know, a battery warranty. I, I've seen batteries that have only been a couple of months bad and they come in and they think it's a problem with their riptide, but it's not, it's their batteries just mm -hmm. can't, can't hold a load and, and it's just totally dead. And that's on a, pretty new battery uh so if you buy online with amazon i would say the, the warranty you know you're gonna have to send it back or whatever you have to do with the warranty and i think it would be a and that's bit, actually an interesting thing that's an interesting thing so this this diagnostic kit that i'm talking about would include a battery load tester hmm. because we've been trying to get people to just buy these things but nobody goes out and buys them and it's a incredibly important tool for this sort of uh, machine, it will tell you if your battery is good or bad within 10 seconds, literally. Oh. It, it, you hold the button for 10 seconds and it will say good or bad right on the, on the needle. So it removes all the mystery out of the batteries because people right now, and that's, that's a very important thing we have learned for us to figure out how to help our customers with it. Because they will go out and struggle with a bad battery sometimes for weeks before they finally just and, and when and when they do finally swap swap out their batteries they do it kind of blindly they don't really know what they've got if it's a good battery or bad battery or they just do it because they need to do something right so this tester will unequivocally tell them it's a good battery or a bad battery right then and there and again this is why riptide customer service is above and beyond because things like this you just came up with for this um, troubleshooting card and then the battery tester. I mean, who else would go through the trouble to help their customers like that? I don't, yeah. think, I don't think many companies would. I don't think so either. And it's funny because a lot of customers have asked us, why don't you put an indicator light on your on your battery or on your control panel or whatever? And the reason we don't is because, first of all, it's fragile electronics. We don't want any of that stuff on the cart. This thing just gets used too hard. It's mm -hmm. in your hands and get beat up every single day, every moment of every day, really and it's just too fragile but the other thing is all it does is reads voltage that voltage reading means absolutely nothing the only mm -hmm. test that we have found that really works and really tells you something is this load tester uh in in a good example of that is you when you put a load tester on there very often we'll see it putting out 12 and a half 13 volts which would tell you it's a good battery right you think that's a good battery at 13 volts mm -hmm. but when you hit that load sometimes it's dropping down to six or eight volts instantly 
Go we ahead. actually had one recently that literally dropped to zero, which blew my mind. I didn't even know that was mm-hmm. possible. It went from 13 volts to zero volts, and I didn't even know it was possible. We actually were trying to run a motor with it, and I thought the motor was bad, but the battery was so bad that, that it was uh, totally misleading. It looked like a full charge on the battery with just a voltage check, but then the battery was absolutely totally spent. And I think that's one of the first things that people should check is their battery if they're noticing a problem with their vacuum system. Yep, that's in the diagnostic guys, procedure. <laughs> yeah. And so before I let you guys go, um, I know it's getting late over there. So you have two models available. You have the Riptide SL with the cart. And then for those who may not need the cart or are looking for something that's more portable, it's the Riptide XP. It's just a vacuum head with the battery box, right? Correct. Yeah, so those are the two models we have. Uh, and then you do have a cord choice between 40 foot or 60 feet of power cord. Uh, but generally, you want to go with the shorter power cord unless you're doing commercial pools. Got it. Uh, otherwise, it's an extra 20 feet of yeah. cord you're going to wrap up at every pool. And, of course, they could find all this out on your website by looking at all the different features on there. Um, but I really appreciate taking the time today, both of you guys taking the time today to record this. And great catching up with you. It's been a while since uh, we saw each other back in Florida before uh, – all this stuff broke out. Yeah, hopefully uh, this is all all over soon, so we can get back out on the trade show circuit and get out there to the Western show and and uh, hopefully make it to one of your meetups next time. Yeah, you know, no, normally the, normally next month in September we go to um, uh, where do we go? Monterey, California. I mm-hmm. love that show. It just not that it's a great show. It's it's just a little tiny show, but it's just a great place to go. So yeah, we, we're, I love we're gonna Monterey. be missing it. Yeah, unfortunate, but um, um, you know, Dave. Though, just a shout out to you. You know, we've been working with you basically since day one at Riptide, which we we've really appreciated everything you've done with us and for us, and you've been you've been important to us. Yeah, I mean, you're a fantastic company, and I, I think what makes it easy is that both you and Matt are very easygoing. And when I like the people I work with, it just makes life easier. It it sure does. Yes, it does. So I appreciate your time again. All right, buddy. All right, Dave. Thanks for having us. We've- Take yeah. care. Take care. Again, you can learn more about the Riptide at RiptideVac.com. You can also go to my website, SwimmingForLearning.com, and click on the scrolling banner that's going across the top. Click on the Riptide Vacuum System banner, and that will take you to their site also. And if you're in the industry and you're looking to enhance your business or you're just starting out, you may be interested in my coaching program. You can learn more about that at PoolGuyCoaching.com. Thanks for listening to this podcast. Have a great week and God bless.